Hey there, it's Joe. So what factors affect the chip load that you can use when milling? And how do you know if you're using the right chip load? Well, let's take a look at it. There's three factors that come into play. One's going to be the material that you're cutting. The other is going to be the material of your cutter. And then the size of your cutter comes into play. So first let's take a look at the material you're cutting. Softer materials, you're going to be able to use a heavier chip load uh, than you can on harder materials. And then let's let, take a look at uh, your cutter material. Uh, your carbide cutters are going to be able to take a heavier chip load than your high speed steel cutters because they're stiffer and stronger. Um, now let's take a look at the size of your cutter. All right. Um, your bigger cutters are going to be stronger and stiffer and able to handle a heavier chip load than your smaller cutters. You try and use the same chip load you can on a big cutter on your little dude, it's going to wind up breaking on you, right? So, smaller chip load on your smaller cutters and a bigger chip load on your bigger cutters. Now, how do you know if you're using the right chip load? Well, if you're breaking your cutter, right? then you're most likely using too heavy of a chip load so you need to lower that. Uh, how do you know if you're using too light of a chip load? Well, what happens when your chip load is too light is that it's going to allow your cutter to rub a little bit, uh, it's going to let uh, heat build up and that heat is going to prematurely wear out your cutter. So if your cutter is uh, wearing out too soon um, it's either one of two factors, either your surface footage is too high or your chip load is too low. So, there you go. I hope this information was informative. Thanks for watching and take it easy.